Hey guys, we are back for the fourth episode, or the fourth part of episode one of Throwback uh, Tournament Review. If you guys managed to miss the first three episodes, check the description below. Uh, they will all be there. And without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, we're hopping into it here. What is this? 4K, 8K. We're in the big blind with the old Jack-9 suited. All right, it's a good hand. We're going to be looking to see a flop here. Not looking to see a flop anymore. Nines, this is going to be an all-in wager. Monster Dong, been around forever. He is uh, quite the player. Hey, any raise folds to us. We got Ace-King suited now. This is a good hand as well. Hey, two good hands, no action. Oh my goodness, nines? Oh my goodness, what a three bet size. All right, so there's some things wrong with this three bet size in general. Back in the day in, in 2012, like this, this three bet sizing wasn't so bad because people didn't flat three bets as much as they do in 2016. So this kind of thing would like work a lot of the time and would be a bluff sometimes, you know? So like this induces like pretty fine. I think these days I'd probably just flat um, or shove for certain opponents, but... Uh, just three betting to this size is probably fine as well. Fibonacci is also very aggressive. I can remember this guy uh, for sure, and he is super lag. So I'm going to expect just to see a good hand still, though, when he rips it. And we do, and it's a very good hand for us to be up against. So a nice cheeky little double there. Um, I guess we'll just like quickly, swiftly move through the hands just in case it's something like super exciting. Min raise was just like the play, you know? There was no need to make it more because nobody peeled their big blind as wide. These days, obviously, like we talked about in the first two videos, super, or in the first few videos, maybe there's even three, that, uh, you know, we want to be making our, our opening sizing bigger these days. But back in the day, it did not make any sense to do it because people did not peel their big blind as wide. Like today, I would have peeled this 9.5. In 2012, fuck no, I didn't peel a 9.5 offsuit in the big blind to a min raise. Even though I'm getting a great, fantastic price, and you know we should be peeling, there's no, there's no, uh, no reason to. All right, ace queen here. I'm, uh, I'm happy to see that I didn't want to go crazy with ace queen offsuit and three bet to get it, three bet to five bet, forty big blinds deep. Even though Fibonacci is probably one of the players that you could do this first, but yeah, flatting is going to be the best play. We see a pretty good flop. Um, we should just see a call here, which we do. He leads out. I mean, it's not a great board for him to be continuation betting super light, so I don't expect him to be, like, just have, like, ace-2 offsuit with, like, complete air here. But uh, I do expect to see some bluffs, like king-jack, king-10, even some, like, you know, ace of clubs, eight hands like that, you know? Something where he's got, like, some backdoor equity or a gut shot or something, and he's betting. But we do go heads up, and we see a very brick good turn. And he bets again, so, I mean, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. We only really beat, like, combo draws, like, flush draws and straight draw flush draws. He could have king-queen or queen-jack, I guess. I feel like he probably finds a check somewhere in the hand, though. Could have jack-10. Could have kings, aces, you know, sets, queen-9. Lots of hands he could have, but we definitely just want to call here. Um, hopefully, he checks the river. If he doesn't check the river, we're just going to call versus this guy. Don't really see any chance of us folding, especially when he can have worse value hands. Um, like King Queen and Queen Jack, like I talked about, uh, we don't really lose to that many hands either. Like Queen Nine, pocket nines, pocket queens, but we block pocket queens, pocket threes, I guess. But like he shouldn't really be opening up threes from that position, so we can kind of rule those out. So pocket nines, pocket queens, Queen Nine, Kings, Aces, and we block two of those hands, and the rest aren't super likely. So yeah, we're definitely just gonna click the call button here. And assume that we're good more than enough of the time. We're also getting an insane price. He made it quite small. Like 4 to 1. So we don't have to be right that often. And he does just have a bricked flush draw. So that's a beautiful pot. And yeah, we're up to 514,000. Uh, pretty good stuff. 51 big blinds. I don't know why. Like, his sizing is so bad. If Like, on the river. Like, his sizing is really poor on the river. Because it's so small. Like, I guess he's just trying to rep, like, kings and aces. But, like... How does he ever expect me to fold a queen here? You know, he just can't expect me to fold a queen. He needs to bet, like... I'd like to see a bigger bet on the turn, to be honest. I'd like to see to see a check on the flop. Uh, maybe even a check call on the turn. Or, you know, a bigger bet, like like 67k here on the turn. And then, like, a, a jam on the river. Or, like a, like, a 180 on the river. I just think 40 and 65 are just going to get called and looked up way too often. All right, we're folding the 510. We're folding the jack six. We're folding the 9-5. Whoa, look at this three-bet size. Is that like a literal click? It is, I think, right? 
So he calls. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens here. Alright, so House of Horror just takes it down. Um, I'd like to see a 3-bet here versus Monster Dong. He is pretty aggressive. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a fold. Maybe a fold's even better because we don't want to really play pots against probably, you know, the best player on our table at this time. Um, but like a 60k bet should work a lot of the time here because, like I'm saying, like he's very aggressive. But we do see a fold, so that's fine. Uh, I should see a raise here. A raise and take it. Exciting. Exciting stuff. Yeah, I don't want to see an open with ace-two offsuit. It's a really bad hand. Other than having the ace, you don't really have anything. Nines, though. All right, another raise and take it. Very exciting stuff. Man, the three-bet sizings in 2012 were just insanely small. Look at them. They're all, like, 2x. Like, this isn't even 2x. He makes it 22k, and he only makes it 18k more. And he wasn't even inducing. He was just bluffing. I mean, I did it, and I, I do do it later in this tournament. I know for sure. I'm like, look at this. Like, a min raise with ace-five offsuit, blind versus blind, 19 big blinds deep. That shit wouldn't fly in 2016. You either limp in here. I'm open shoving. I'm open shoving 19 big blinds. People just didn't really open shove like 20 big blinds back in the day. But we raise, he calls. I'd love to see a check here. Um, I want to slow down with my ace, give him some chance to hang himself. He doesn't really have too much that he can call with when I have the ace. But we do bet, and he raises. All right, well, I really want to see a call now. I would imagine at this time that I probably just ripped it and was like, oh, I want to protect my ace with a flush draw and stuff. But, like, that doesn't really make sense because he's going to have so many bluffs here. Like, so many bluffs. Oh my god, I click it back. What the fuck are you doing, Parker? What the hell? Why you do this? Why you do this? Um, I guess we're just trying to induce, but, like, how are we ever inducing? Is he ever just shoving, like, King Jack offsuit here? Now he's just gonna fold. Yeah, we definitely want to see a call here. I mean, okay, I want to see a check. First of all, I want to see a limp. I want to see a limp or a shove. I want to see a limp if he's a very aggressive player and is gonna raise fold. That's fine. Um, I think I preferably want to shove here in, in 2016 poker. In 2012 poker, it probably made more sense to min-raise a small blind. Because this guy probably folds the big blind just, like, way too often, you know? Whereas in 2012, or in 2016, like, like today's game, people are probably calling with, like, 80% of hands in the big blind here. Whereas in 2012, four years ago, they're probably calling with, like, only, like, 50%. So if people are folding, like, half of their, like, double the hands that they're folding, no, sorry, like, five times the hands that they're folding today, then min-raise definitely makes sense. Um, but yeah, like I talked about, just want to check because he doesn't really have much he can call with and we open him up to bluffing. Uh, but he bluffs anyways, so we should definitely play our hand for value now and just call and plan on check calling or check shoving the turn. Uh, we're not really scared of any turn cards. Maybe scared of like a club, but whoop de fucking do you know? Like all the money's going to go in, all in if he has a flush draw regardless. I don't think he's going to min-raise the flop with a flush draw and then check back the turn. He's going to rip it. But like he just so clearly has a bluff when he does this that we definitely just need to call. But we don't, we click, and we take it down, but we played it poorly. All right, I don't know why we're limping. This is not a great hand to limp. Uh, King-9 suited would be a better hand to limp, but 40 big blinds deep, and I guess maybe we thought this guy would shove really wide, but we should just come in for a raise. Like, a raise is just going to work so often. I mean, this is a great board for our limp. We're going to take it down a lot with a bet. So that's, like, a good result, but raising accomplishes more than limping. While limping is better than folding, in my opinion, I think that raising is just, like, significantly better. So the blinds do pop up to 6k, 12k. Uh, we're going to come in for another min raise. Gnat 777 is a reg. It's just like there was just no need to do anything more than min raise back in the day. You know, it just accomplished the same thing. As like making it like 2.5x or something. Get another raise through. I wish, can I pick my seat? I don't think so. Oh well, it doesn't matter anyways. Alright, so I mean this is a good hand. We can raise it. It's cool. All right, so we get called the big blind. We flop a flush draw. I mean, I think we're going to notice that we just made a lot of good hands in this tournament. Uh, small C bet sizing, super standard back then. Today, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a check back. If I was going to bet, I'd probably bet like 32, 33, 34,000. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to take it down here with the bet, which is totally fine. Uh, easy fold. We should see a raise in the button here if it folds to us, but we do not. All right. This is kind of finicky with the card here, isn't it? It's kind of obnoxious. All right, so we're going to raise the ace four. We get flatter on the button. Uh, we've got bottom pair. Don't mind seeing a bet here. Don't mind seeing a check. I think I prefer a check. I, I just don't think he's going to fold enough uh, in position when he flaps the button to our min race. But we do see a check, which is cool. Now we're going to see a 26k bet. I, I don't mind this at all. I think we have the best hand versus uh, bigger ace highs a lot of the time. Um, so 
By betting 26k, though, we're kind of playing our hand for value. You know, we're saying, I think my pair of fours is good a lot of the time here. I want to just uh, protect my equity, which is okay. I think a better plan is maybe just to bet, like, 57k and smash, like, 150k bluff on the river and try to give them to fold hands, like, fives, sixes, eights, nines, um, maybe, like, a seven suited, seven eight suited, middling pairs, middle strength pairs that are going to be beating us. I think that's just, like, an overall better plan because I don't really think he can have, like, a super-duper strong hand when he checks back this flop. You know, if he has, like, a set or even, like, king-queen, queen-jack, ace-queen, he's going to bet that on the flop. If you manage to flat with an overpair, he's going to bet it. So, I mean, the only really strong value hand I, I can see him having here is pocket threes. He calls, and we river two pair. Okay. So, definitely want to come in for a value bet now. Uh, maybe, like, 75, 80,000. Maybe a bit smaller, even. I mean, I guess he could have checked back a flusher on the flop, but I don't think so. Yeah, maybe any, anywhere from, like, 60 to 80,000, I think, should be good here. Like, 40 to 55% pot, something like that. Maybe we want to even go a little bit less because of, like I was talking about, he's going to have, like, a lot of middling pairs. But he, he could have, like, ace-jack, ace-10, ace-nine type hands here a lot. And those will pay, like, 80k every time. So, I don't know, like, 60, 70, 80,000. All right, so we do bet 77. And he quickly calls and has a 7 indeed. So, this is the kind of hand that I was saying we should try to maybe bluff twice to get him off of. Like, a middling strength pair, you know? Honestly, guys, I didn't know that, that was the result on the hand. It just seemed like from his check back on the flop, that is what he would have. You guys gotta realize that this was four years ago. I don't remember any of these hands, and this is my first time reviewing them and going through them again in four years. We won't be playing this one, but uh, I'll see. Good hand, aces. So we raise, we fold the ace four into the gun now. We we learned our lesson with the ace four. So like this should be a call, but we're gonna fold because 2012 people didn't call four seven offsuit in the big blind. At least you know, really good players might have, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, standard fold there. He's opening off with 17 blinds in the hijack, so. Yep, we would expect to see a hand like aces. Not surprising. Blinds have gone up to 15k big blind now. I feel like 15k big blind in this tournament, it's like not a standard blind level. That's when it starts to feel deep, you know? That's when you start to be like, hmm, we're about halfway through this thing. I, I could win this. I could win this. Uh, I should see a fold here. I don't think that's a very good hand selection to 3-bet versus none of the gun opener. 60k on the flop. That's a big bet. And he smashes it out on the turn with 150. And he gets the fold. Wow. He must have had a strong holding. So some boring hands here, but that's fine. I should fold here. Okay. Okay. I don't hate the 3-bet. I think it looks very, very strong um, from this position. And, you know, back in the day, the joke was, under the gun is the new button which meant that people opened very wide under the gun because it looked so strong that it just became a thing that everybody was raising super wide under the gun. So I think that a small blind 3-bet versus under the gun open as well looks super, super nutted. Um, so I think it's a good spot. Naturally, I'd like to see a bigger size than 2.25x 3-bet. We're out of position. He's getting a great price to call. Um, he should have like a decently stronger range opening under the gun, even though what I just talked about you know, under the gun being the new button. So I would like to see at least 75,000 here. I think it works a lot more. But again, back in the day, it wasn't necessary to make these sizes that, that much bigger. Today, if you three-bet 67.5 versus under the gun raise in this spot, versus like anyone competent at all, like even remotely competent, they would literally laugh in your face and then call. You know, like you're never taking this down pre-flop. And with a hand like Queen Jack offsuit, we want to take this down pre-flop. If we're not taking this down pre-flop, then, you know, there's no point in three-betting. It's very stupid to three-bet. So he does call. Um, that's like a decent flop for us to bet, I think, and, and win the chips. And so we will go ahead and do so. The reason being is just like we represent like a lot of like ace queen, ace, ace, ace queen, ace king, ace jack, and he probably doesn't have too much of that. He probably gets ace king and preflop. Uh, ace queen, I guess, ace jack, ace ten suited, he could have all that. But yeah, this still should be like a decent board to bet. So he calls, and I'm not liking this anymore. I don't know what to do now. I don't want to see a barrel. If we barrel, we like only represent ace king and ace queen. And, like, maybe we even flat ace-queen here. So we basically only represent, like, ace-king. But we do indeed barrel. And, I mean, I guess this gets him to fold. I guess my logic is, and it does make sense, this gets him to fold, like, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens. You know, middling strength pairs that he didn't want to get in preflop that he just wanted to call with because of the price. But he, I think that he just has, like, ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-ten too often and he continues with it. But I, I, we do get the bet through. So we win some chips there. But overall, I'm not a big fan of our play. I think we should make a bigger preflop. I think we should either, you know, 
give up on the turn or I don't know. I just let hate our size preflop. We just never take it down. Full full stop. A7 suited versus under the gun raise off of like 17 blinds. It's gonna be a fold for sure. Ace Queen. See what I mean? Whenever I say this, like off of 17 blinds, something like that, they always seem to have it. And a byproduct of that will be that it is the Sunday million. So people will should be ta should be playing a little bit tighter. Uh easy fold here for 15 blind shove. Don't people did not shove as wide back in the day as they do these days. And even still, that would still be a fold. So we see a ray raise here. We should fold our hand. Um, it does not make any sense to call. Do we call? No, okay. We do not call. We just fold. Um, but yeah, he's three betting half of his stack, which is only like a 12 big blind, 12 and a half big blind stack anyway. So pretty easy stuff for us. This is a good hand. Do we get action though? We do. We get the big blind. So we should check back. We bet. Um, at the time, you know, I just had like a very high continuation bet percentage. I just thought like, oh, betting the flop is good. No matter what you have. You know, top pair, jacks, king high, bet, bet, bet. But, uh, yeah, this doesn't really make much sense. For the most part, you protect your equity kind of versus hands like, you know, king, queen, I guess, is the best one that you're protecting worse. But for the most part, you're only getting uh, worse hands to fold and better hands to call. So he does fold, we take it down, but it's just not a very good bet in general. See, like, look, this 3-bet worked for Zwacky. And Zwacky's, like, a decent regular, you know? And he made it 30k, and this guy makes it 2x, and it works. Like, how could you ever fold getting that kind of price with a hand that you want to open from here? I guess you have, like, a7 offsuit you can fold, but other than that, like, you don't really want to fold. Blinds pop up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ho, 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 what a fold, what the fuck? Why? I mean, 22,000 chips. I'm getting six to one on a call with a suited ace. Like, I can make the nuts in so many ways. I can have the nut flush draw. Oh, 30, 33 big blinds deep for his two opponents. Why? Misclick. It had to be a misclick, guys. It had to be a misclick. There's no way I'm that stupid. Like, there's no fucking way I'm that stupid. Oh my goodness. It's a sin. This is a sin. This is an absolute fucking sin. I mean, granted, we would have lost an extra 22,000 chips, so great fold. Great fucking fold. I mean, look at the hands we're up against. Can I? What a fold. What a fucking fold. Can, can I just get a round of applause? If you're at home, if you're watching this video on YouTube right now, if you're in your pajamas, if you're butt naked, whatever you're doing, can, can, you, can we just get a round of applause for just an overall fantastic fold with ace three of diamonds? I mean, top set and pocket aces. I'm just fucking kidding. Awful fold. Terrible fold. What are we doing? These hands, we don't even hate being up against these hands, you know? Because we're looking to make, like, trip threes or... I mean, we hate being up against aces if we want to make two pair. But we're making, we're looking to make like the nut flush or trip threes or a straight with a hand like ace three. You know, we're not looking to make you know an ace and hold on or something like that. All right, we're gonna pump it blind versus blind here. Face the big stack. I mean, we got a good hand and raising a small blind was standard back then. We flopped uh, an open ender here. All right, that's cool. We take it down. Definitely like the bet there. Seems fine. These days, I'd prefer a limp call with that hand, but raising back in the day definitely made sense. So we have ace-10 here. Apologies for the, the replay being a little bit laggy there. We will just work through it. It's not a problem. So we see a raise. This time, I might just go with it. Um, I mean, he did the same raise before, pretty much. Very similar. This time, it's even smaller, even weaker. I think we just pile and get in the ace-10 here, and we do. I like it. I like it. I'm happy with you, Tonka. You've done well. He's got threes. We win the flip. Ship those biscuits over to Papa. Let's go. 923k. We're almost getting close to that milli mark. King and a jack. Pumping it up. Getting it through. Come on. Let's get. Let's break a million. I've got faith in us. I think we can do it. I know we do it. I know we do it. Wow. This is a little folding stretch here. All right. Let's break the folding stretch. Pump it up with the queen jack under the gun. I really want to see a bet here, and I really want to see a small bet. So this guy flatted out of the big blind off of about eight big blinds. I would love to see like a 27,000 chip bet here. I think that 27,000 and all in accomplish the same thing. I think if he has a pair, he's not going to be folding on this board. So I think 
that if we bet like 27,000 chips, it accomplishes the same thing as pretty much shoving. And we decided to bet really big. I don't know if my intention was, I don't know how this hand plays out. I don't know if we bet call, but I feel like when you bet 47,000 and he's only gonna have like 80K behind, like 87K behind or something, you gotta just move it in. You gotta be calling it off, you know? Like that bet's too big. Uh, like I said, I just wanna bet small. Do, do, do. Not a terrible three bet squeeze pot versus two aggressive regulars with queen nine. I think we look really strong if we make it like 150, but I would prefer to just fold anyways. Thank you guys for checking out part four of Throwback Tournament Review. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I am uh, releasing a video here on the channel every single day. So yeah, it, it helps me out uh, and you get notifications every time we go live. So be sure to sub and come back for part five very soon. It's sellout time, boys. Check it out.